the best way to accelerate innovation is don't start stupid things. So I'm going to talk about new product introduction, new process introduction, failure mode. So over the my 30 plus years of innovation, I've gotten a pretty good uh, understanding of, of sort of what makes things fail. And, and the most important thing that I would ask you to remember is that very few, in fact, I'm trying to think of anything that failed because technically we couldn't do it. You know, the technology just didn't work. And I can't think of anything that we weren't ultimately able to solve the technical issue. Every failure that I've seen in innovation was because of lack of understanding of the value proposition or the marketing. And so technology guys, you can't just say, well, sorry, Mr. My CEO, or you know, I, I wasted $1.7 billion of your money because the marketing guy screwed up. So technology guys, I think in, it's incumbent on us to be closet marketing people and often to really create value, you need a technical person and, and getting a, an MBA in marketing is not adequate. So, so I'm gonna try to describe seven key failure modes that I've observed. And where this really came home to me is when we were learning Six Sigma at GE, we did a lot on the statistics. And my, my favorite slide was this one where we talk about averages, average and new product sales, average margin on new products. And, and the average, the problem is Averages just smooth over way too much information. So if you look at this, there's four shotgun shots there. And on average, the ducks are dead, but obviously they're not dead. And so the point is you need to understand the nuances and, and get into a very high fidelity level of understanding what you're doing and where it goes. So we did this exercise when I first came to GE Plastics. And plastics at GE was polycarbonate engineering plastics, not commodities. And we looked at all of the NPIs we had done after three years and said, well, what's the sales from these products three years after they were commercialized? Not three years after we started the work, but three years actually, they were actually a commercial product. And, and it was disheartening because if you look at this spot, you can see you know, 80% of our new products had practically no sales. And so then we went in and, and started to say, look, we need to understand why this is occurring. And we looked at a lot of metrics, but the, the, I saved it for last, the most highly correlated single failure mode for no sales was single customer new products, where you'd have a customer who says they want something, you develop a new product for them. And so at the end of my talk, I'll go through why I think those are something you have to be especially careful of. But, but in plastics, that was the biggest reason we had a lot of resources wasted down there and the, you know, 50% of our stuff had basically no sales. Then clearly, when you average this, it doesn't look too bad. When we looked at our average new product sales, it didn't look very bad. Our vitality was actually decent, but it misrepresented the fact that probably a good third to half of our resources were being wasted. And there's this thing, you know, you, you launch a new product and everybody's really excited and then the reality sort of hits in. And so what I'm gonna to try to do is quickly go through, you know, why I see these things fail and, and, and things to try to avoid. And I'll give everything in the same format, which is what I see the failure mode is and what's a symptom of it. If you hear these kind of things, it should be the first red flag that comes up. So the first is just, you get caught up in fads. And, you know, those of you that are XGE, you know, I mean, Immel was classic of this. He got caught up in fads, the hydrogen economy, bioplastics, you know, trying to get into gas after it had gone down. He's got to be digital. And so there is this lemming mentality of, geez, everybody's doing this, so we've got to get into it. And, and, and so you've got to really look at the technology and the value proposition and not just the hype that's around it. These fads tend to have tremendous hype and the symptom is all of our competitors are doing it or this was used before, but, but things have changed. And, and that could be true. Things might change every five to 10 years, you've got to relook at, are my current reasons something failed, still valid, but you've got to make sure there's really been a change. 